If you've been a Christian for a while, you've probably heard the word anointing many times. But what does it truly mean? What does the Bible say about it? Stick with us to the end of this video as you'll learn more about this important subject that will change your life. But if you're new here, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel as we provide spiritual content that will build your faith and cause your spiritual life to move forward. So we're talking about the anointing today. What does it truly mean? In the Old Testament, God would command things and people to be anointed or separated for a special purpose. I'll give an example. David, as we know this story in 1 Samuel, was anointed by Samuel to be the king over Israel. He was formally and publicly separated with the anointing of oil representing the presence of the Holy Spirit coming upon him so he could become king later on. The priests would anoint or smear oil on the utensils of the temple to indicate separation for a special use. So in the Old Testament, people would crush the olives and the oil would come. And that oil would be poured out upon an object or a person to indicate separation for a special purpose. That's the first picture we have of the anointing. The anointing is a separation for a specific purpose. So the anointing is not just an abstract thing. It is a clear separation for a specific purpose. We read in Luke chapter 4 verse 18 where Jesus went to the synagogue and he read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable ear of the Lord. I want you to pay attention to the fact that he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The anointing is the Spirit of God coming upon somebody to fulfill a specific assignment. The anointing is not some abstract feeling. It is not some goosebump that you feel or electricity. That may be the result of the anointing, but the anointing is God's separation and empowerment to someone in order for that individual to fulfill a purpose. And Jesus read, He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. In other words, He was empowered by the Spirit of God to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable ear of the Lord. The anointing is God's separation for a purpose. So when you think about the word anointing, think about the word separation. Jesus was set apart from his mother's womb to fulfill a purpose of being the savior of the world. Even the, the word Jesus Christ, the name Jesus Christ, Christ means the anointed one or the empowered one, the Messiah, the anointed from God. So if you want to understand about the anointing first, you got to understand that it means separation. We also read in the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. It says God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and he went around 
doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil. So the anointing came upon Jesus so that he could go around doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil. The anointing serves a purpose. So you don't just feel the anointing just so you can have a good feeling. When God pours out his anointing on an individual, it always serves a purpose. So think about the anointing as God separating you for a purpose and God commissioning and empowering you to do something for the kingdom. The anointing comes with a purpose. The anointing is not just what you feel. The anointing is the right and empowerment by the Spirit of God so you can fulfill an assignment. Now it's very important to say that there are different types of anointing. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 that God himself called some to be apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, and evangelists for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. There are different gifts in the body of Christ and different functions. And God has separated people for a specific purpose and assignment. Some people are anointed to teach. Others are anointed to heal the sick. Some people are anointed to prophesy. I'm not saying that not everyone can prophesy, but some people carry a special anointing for that. You got to understand your mission and your purpose and your place in the body of Christ and do what God has called you to do. Fulfill your assignment and the anointing of the Lord, the anointing of the Holy Spirit will be there to back you up according to what you were called to do. I've seen people that were called to do a certain type of ministry and God has graced them and empowered them to do that in a wonderful way and they try to move into a different position that God never called them into. It's very important that we understand what God has anointed us with and called us into so we can fulfill our assignment under the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. Some people are even anointed in the marketplace. God has called them to be influencers. People who will lead many souls to Jesus Christ in the marketplace. Maybe you're a lawyer, a doctor, a psychologist, a teacher. And God has called you to be a person of influence, carrying His presence and His anointing and His power into the marketplace where some pastors cannot go. God has called you for such a time as this. And there's an anointing. There's a, a separation that God wants to do in your life to fulfill an assignment. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 and 5, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. Verse 6 says, And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. It's very important to understand that though there are different types of the anointing, there are different types of callings, but it is all done by the same Spirit, by the Holy Spirit of God. So God has called you for such a time as this with a specific anointing from the Lord to fulfill an assignment. Find your place, find your identity in Him. Ask Him direction in what He wants you to do and He will surely guide you into a place where there's an overflow of His anointing, grace and favor. So the anointing means separation and empowerment for a purpose. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, I want to tell you that you already carry the anointing on the inside of you. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, But the anointing which you have received from Him abides in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true, and it's not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in Him. Of course, it does not refer to the fact that 
it is negating teachers because in Ephesians chapter 4 the Bible says he called teachers it is just to say that this anointing will guide you into what is true and what is false and also the anointing within you will testify to that which comes from the Spirit of God when someone is teaching you by the anointing that anointing will ring the bell with the anointing that is on the inside of you so that's what it means so if you are a believer in Jesus Christ you already carry a measure of the anointing on the inside of you as the Bible says the anointing abides in you but of course you and I can grow into that anointing we receive the anointing of the Spirit when we are born again but we can grow in the anointing of the Lord every day our hunger for God will cause the anointing in us to manifest to greater levels I'll give an example Moses didn't start by parting the Red Sea we see even in his life a development of the anointing where the ten plagues of Egypt happened one by one and each one was in greater demonstration of power to the point that after a certain level the magicians and the sorcerers of Egypt could not follow anymore we see that later on he ended up parting the Red Sea even in the life of Jesus we see that progression of power and demonstration he started by changing water into wine but later on he was cleansing the leper and even raising Lazarus from the dead he himself was crucified and after three days rose again by God's power and ascended to heaven after 40 days so there was a progression of growth in the anointing in the life of Jesus and just like Jesus grew in the anointing we can grow each and every day it is our hunger and our surrender to the Lord that will determine the growth of the anointing in our lives nowadays everyone wants to be anointed many people want the glory and the power of God they want the miracles they want the signs and wonders and it's wonderful but there's an element of crushing and an element of self-denial that is necessary in order for us to grow in the anointing there's an element of surrender to the Holy Spirit the growth of the anointing in your life will be dependent upon the level of your surrender to the Spirit of God we see that Jesus himself in the Garden of Gethsemane he said father if it is possible let this cup pass from me but not my will but yours be done your level of surrender will determine the level of anointing that the Lord will entrust you with so in the Old Testament they would crush the olives so the oil would come out in order for that oil to be used to anoint something or somebody are you willing to be crushed so that the oil can be poured the oil which represents the presence of the Spirit are you willing to surrender everything for the anointing of the Lord surrender will cause greater manifestation of the glory of God in your life and I want to pray for you right now I want to pray that that anointing that presence of God will invade your life will touch you fill you and if the Lord has used you I'm gonna pray that you will go to a new level of the anointing of the Lord and God will empower you to fulfill his purpose and his calling will be seen in your life you shall know your calling you shall know your purpose father I pray in the name of Jesus for every friend watching right now I pray anoint each one of them reveal your will and purpose to them Lord I pray that there'll be a fresh revelation of what they're called to do that the calling of the Lord will be clear that the voice of, of the Lord will be heard there will be no obstacles there will be no barriers and I pray that the anointing of the Spirit the power of the Holy Ghost will be poured out upon everyone watching right now I pray there'll be a greater level of surrender 
a greater level of fulfillment in your presence. And I pray in the name of Jesus for open heavens upon every friend. Pour out your anointing. Heal those who are sick. Deliver those who are oppressed. And let your glory be revealed in my friends. In Jesus' name, amen. Make sure you like this video. Leave a comment where you're watching from and share it with your friends so that we can spread this wonderful word of God to many people.